Hi everyone, my name is Miran. Uh, I gave the following presentation during uh, the ASM Award Spotlight session at the World Microbe Forum in June 2021. I'm recording this video to make sure that it's accessible to those who didn't have a chance to uh, follow uh, the meeting um, uh, this year. So here we go. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Chicago Department of Medicine and I'm a fellow of the Marine Biological Laboratory in Woodsall, United States. My group and I study the ecology and evolution of naturally occurring microbial populations through integrated omics and wet lab strategies. I'm here today because I am the recipient of the ASM's 2021 Early Career in Environmental Science Award. I'm extremely thankful for my colleagues who nominated me for this award, Vincent Deneff, Greg Dick, and Jill Banfield, and I'm very thankful to those who are at the ASM for their consideration. I also thank my PhD advisor, Michael Ferris, and my postdoc advisor, Mitch Sogin, who kick-started my journey in science. This all means a lot to me, and I also thank you for watching this. When I was asked by the ASM to record a short talk, I started thinking about how to best use this unexpected platform. I could talk about Envio, the open source uh, software platform we uh, uh, developed for integrated multiomics, or I could talk about the ex exciting projects my group has been working on. But I decided to talk about something that we all should talk about more often, mentorship in science. I would like to start by acknowledging the fact that the most immediate reason I am here today is the many early career researchers who trusted me as their mentor and helped me to have a career with their hard work. And while what is recognized by this award is the work we did together as a team, inevitably, I will be the only person in this team who will get to mention this recognition in their CV. So what are the mentees in science getting back from all this? As principal investigators, we're unable to promise our trainees permanent positions, or unlike most other professions, even while paying jobs while they are working with us. Arguably, the only impactful thing we're able to promise them is our mentorship. The definition of a mentor is quite straightforward. Yet effective mentorship in academia is extremely difficult. And as we all know, Mentor-mentee relationships are not always happy and productive. We as mentors find ourselves in positions of power with little to no preparation to understand what is expected of us, and we're often unable to appreciate the impact of our actions on our trainees. We as mentees, in contrast, do not recognize the critical importance of identifying mentors that match our needs and expectations, and we are unable to appreciate the long-lasting impact of mentorship we will receive on our well-being and careers. Indeed, most of us find their way through positive and negative experiences, but these occasionally very costly lessons rarely transcend to the next generation effectively. So I decided to use this opportunity given to me by my mentees to highlight the critical need to improve mentee-mentor relationships in science. And not only that, I want to um, uh, tell everyone that there are things many of us as mentors can do very little uh, with very little investment to immediately improve our relationships with our mentees. So in preparation to this talk, I put together a survey in which I promised mentees that I would amplify their strictly anonymous experiences with a mentor if they wish to share it with the world. In the past three weeks, the survey was taken by more than 300 people that were from almost 40 countries. Most of these mentees who filled the survey described an experience with a mentor in life sciences, and most of them work with a mentor in the United States. Most mentees described their experience uh, as, uh, as a gr graduate student, during which they worked with a mentor who was a full professor. Most mentees were women. In contrast, most mentors were men. And that is our science community today, as you all know. The overall experience um, uh, of, of mentees were captured by this very important question, which asked mentees to rate the entirety of their experience with their mentor. And this was the distribution. First, I thought that this distribution was promising due to the large number of positive experiences. I, I didn't know what to expect to be perfect, Dennis. So uh, uh, this was kind of surprising to me in a pleasant way. But after reading about the nature of negative experiences, I was convinced that even a single negative experience was too many for our community to accept. We simply cannot find comfort in the higher frequency of positive experiences. So how to make things better? Indeed, an awareness of our strengths and shortcomings as mentors is probably one of the most effective ways to turn negative mentee experiences into positive ones. 
Yet, while mentees felt that most mentors were aware of their strengths in mentorship, they were not aware of their shortcomings in it. The implications of this was not surprising. Mentees were much more likely to have positive experiences with mentors who were aware of their shortcomings in mentorship. So you may be asking yourselves, how can we know about our shortcomings in mentorship? So in fact, there's an easy way, uh, uh, one way to make sure that you are aware of your shortcomings in mentorship is to ask your mentees for feedback indeed. But it turns out that the majority of mentors do not ask for feedback on their mentorship style ever. And unfortunately here I can testify that I never did this either. So it's not like I'm blaming anyone for anything, but this is uh, how, how things go today. And perhaps we need to start thinking about how to change these things because this too has interesting implications. For instance, only a very few, very few number of mentees reported negative experiences with their mentor who asked for feedback on their mentorship style, even as little as once throughout the entire period of mentor-mentee relationship. You may think, well, if they have concerns about my mentorship style, uh, why, why, would, why wouldn't they tell me? Why should I ask my mentees about my mentorship style uh, at the first place? Because um, uh, it may be difficult to do to, do, to mentees, of course. It turns out that regardless of what we feel, uh, many mentees felt that their mentor did not make it easy for them to raise their concerns. This is also uh, uh, something that uh, with interesting uh, and not su so surprising implications. Very few number of mentees reported negative experiences with their mentors who, th who they thought made it easy for them to raise their concerns. So apart from these active ways to improve dynamic mentor-mentee uh, relationships, such as asking for feedback from them or encouraging them to speak up, there's a passive yet effective um, uh, uh, way to help mentees understand our mentorship style before they even approach to us. A very effective strategy, in my opinion, is to explain our mentorship strategy through an online document, which is really easy to do, and anyone could do that. But it turns out that only an extremely small fraction of uh, us as mentors offer an idea about uh, their mentorship style through a code of conduct or group culture and expectations document. This too have uh, interesting implications, as you can imagine. Mentees seem to have much less negative mentorship experiences with mentors who provide a code of conduct document, perhaps because they are more likely to recognize whether there's a good match there. Mentees tend to have great skills with data but only if they are provided. Um, implementing a, a code of conduct, conduct document, in my opinion, is one of the easiest ways to take a step towards improving mentor-mentee relationships and realize our own qualities in mentorship while all of us wait for a systemic change in science. I truly think that um, uh, the, working on such a document, in fact, uh, is extremely helpful to the mentor uh, um, as well, because this is one way to ask ourselves, what, how do we see ourselves as mentors? And writing it down uh, kind of holds us uh, accountable, uh, 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 even if we are unable to uh, deliver such mentorship in the long run. So if you think this is something worthy of your time, you can find much more about the survey results and testimonials um, uh, written by mentees themselves at this URL on your screen. I thank you very much for your time and uh, your attention to these matters. Thank you.